Hi everyone, welcome to this Lighthouse tutorial. In this tutorial, we will majorly cover four topics. That is LHCI client, that will be our local. Then we will be uploading to LHCI server. So we will create the LHCI report and then upload it to Lighthouse server. Okay. So we will be learning how to create our own Lighthouse server. Then we will be integrating our Lighthouse into pipelines, with bucket pipelines. Later on, we'll be using Lighthouse with login page. So you can generate reports for pages like dashboard and similar things. First, let's see what Lighthouse is. So Lighthouse is basically a tool created by Google to actually check the performance, accessibility and user experience of a website. So let's take a demo for it. So this is my simple website, all right. I just run it. Now let's perform a lighthouse in testing on this one. Okay. So as you can see, this shows me what improvements my website needs, what's my uh, website loading time and stuff. So let's try to run the Lighthouse analysis on our local server. Okay. So in order to do that, let's see the requirements. First, we need to have Node.js in our system. Then we have to install a Node.js package that is LSCS SCLI. We can install this in project or globally okay so let's do that for now i'll install it in local project okay so the installation has been completed now there are two ways to run the lhci report one is three step method that is lhci health check then we have to run lhci collect then we have to run LHCI upload. The health check will do all the health check that if LHCI is possible to, uh, to run or not. Then comes LHCI collect that will generate the report and LHCI will upload the remote. But there is one more command that is LHCI auto run. This is the second way of running the report. In this way, uh, the, all these three LHCI health check, collect and upload are done together. Okay. And there are two ways to start the LSCI report generation. One is by passing the arguments here along with the LSCI auto run command. That is something like LSCI auto run and we'll be passing the options. Okay. But there's one more way, which is more predominant. That is lighthouse rc.js file. Okay. So what we have to do is the project, which contains the UI or admin. Okay where we need to do the lighthouse analysis we'll keep this file in that root folder so in this case inside ui i have created this file called lighthouse rc.js okay i have content field i'll explain you what it means so let's start with the collect part okay so in collect part inside the url argument we have to place all the urls that needs to be executed so right now my LSCI report will be done for this part, this URL. Okay. Now number of runs, number of runs is, for example, if I keep one, then the LHCI, LHCI report will be generated once. Okay. But here we have done three. So what will happen? The LSCI report will be determined or run for three times. Okay. One, two, three. And the average that is median of all three reports will be considered and that will be uploaded okay now let's come to the start server command so as you know this is a local development okay so i have npm run start which will start my server okay npm run start which will start my next year server okay so let's see what happens when i run in npm run start so my server was started okay which is this one when the server was started, 
it logged this string we'll use this string to let lhca know that our server has started okay so we have to just copy this whole string and paste it in start server ready pattern so what will happen when your server will start lhca needs to know the server was started or uh, started or not okay so we'll use this string and paste it over here so this is the way lhca will get to know that our server was started now let's come to the settings part so the preset is desktop this could be mobile or tablet okay the host name is my local ip in my local host case and these are chrome flags so chrome flags are used to run the chrome and inside the chrome the lsca report will be generated remember no sandbox and headless are the very two important part in this chrome flags but it is recommended to have all, all this four of them okay there are plenty of other configurations which you can find in the github repo for lsci for example single page or not so we can mention if our website is single page or not okay now let's come to the upload part so right now we have target as temporary public storage so what will happen when i run my lsci report my report will be published to a temporary public storage that is a google temporary public storage here we can have configuration for our own server which will be doing in next part now let's come to the assets part so here i have preset as lighthouse recommended in most of the cases this is the preset that you'll be using but in case you just want to have seo report or you just want to have report for optimization or you just want to have report for let's say first contact full paint okay so you can mention it here like individual reports which you want but if we have lighthouse recommended it will uh, analyze all the reports which are recommended by lighthouse okay so now let's try to run this and see if our report is generated or uploaded or not okay so with what we'll do is lsci auto run running this part it will take all the configurations from here okay so let's try to run it so the the first step is health check which is going on and remember we need to have chrome installed in our server i mean in machine so health check is passed there are no problems now the server was started and lighthouse was able to detect the server using the string that we provided over here okay now the first run is going on we mentioned three runs so it will take three runs so the collect part has been done and the upload part has been completed now let's try to open this repo report which is in the public domain so as you can see for my this page the lsci report was generated all the performance analysis and everything was generated and it is it has been uploaded to this public repo there is no problem in uploading into public repo but this reports are only retained for 7 days it will be removed after 7 days and that is why it is preferable to run our own server okay so that's for that is it for uh, this lsci local part so now let's try to host our own lsci server so that we can send the reports to that server okay so in order to create a lighthouse server we need to have docker installed in our system if you are using a local system then it should be in your machine or if you are using a instance it should be installed in the instance okay so let's take this image from our docker hub so this is the name of the image and we'll take the latest one okay i'll just copy this and let's go to our server so i'll pull the docker image <coughs> now let's create a volume for lsci data and then this is final command to get the up 
server up and running. Uh, this port can be con configured as per the requirement, but right now I'll just keep as it is. <coughs> so yeah, now let's just check if the server was executed or not. The port was nine double zero one. So yeah, as you can see, uh, now we are able to see the server details. But in order to create a project, we need to run LSCA wizard. Okay, now uh, let's try to set up our first project on the LSCA server. Let's just copy this command, and this can be done from anywhere. So uh, I'll do it from here itself. It won't make any changes to your local <coughs> deployment. Okay, let's just try to run LSCA wizard. A new project. <coughs> it will ask for URL where our server is hosted. <coughs> Name on the project would be demo. Demo app. The project is, I will just skip everything for it right now. Okay. So, uh, make sure you just copy this details and keep it somewhere safe. Okay. So now if you go and refresh, so we have our demo app over here, okay. Just open it, go to settings and add the admin token over there. Yeah. So our project is ready now, ready to be used. So now as we have our server set up, now let's try to upload this report to our server, okay. So in order to do, do that, we'll be making some changes in the upload part, okay. So our target will be LSCI, that is LSCI server. Server base URL, that will be the base URL of our server. In this case, it will be this one. And the token would be the one we got during the LSCA wizard part. So we can use the build token. Now let's try to run the LSCA auto run and see if it is working or not. Let's try to refresh our dashboard. So as you can see, the report is here. Okay, this report is for the branch added UI. That is this one. So these are our all the reports we got. We can open report from here. Yeah, so that is it for connecting our LSCI to our server. So now let's run the lighthouse analysis on our CI pipelines. So we'll be using Bitbucket pipelines to generate lighthouse report and upload it to our server. So 
So I have a Bitbucket pipeline YAML file in my root directory. Okay. I have added a step for Lighthouse. I have used the image. You can use this image to perform the Lighthouse analysis and change the node version according to your requirement. You can go to a Docker Hub and see if your node version is available for this build or not. Then, uh, so the problem with Lighthouse is, Lighthouse server is, it won't be able to do the analysis and store the reports for one branch in multiple times. Okay. So to override this, what I have done is, I have exported few environment variables. So you can just use this ones and place it in your Bitbucket pipeline. Okay. Then I am going to the UI folder, which is this one and doing the NPM install and then doing the run build. Now, if you remember, we are starting the server with the help of LSCI itself. So we don't need to run NPM run start here. We just need to build and then LSCI will take care of it. Okay. Now let's just make a uh, minute changes. Let's th push this code. And let's see if it's working or not. Let's go to our pipelines and see if pipeline is running or not. Let's also open our server. So this is a build number two. So here we should get a build number two over here. Okay. For the same branch. So the lighthouse step has been completed. Now let's come here and refresh. So as you can see now, the new report is ready. We can open the report. Okay. Now let's create a new branch. So uh, I'm doing this uh, just to let you know that this will be done for each and every branch. Okay. Lighthouse analysis will be done for individual branches.
so the branch has been published now let's come to the bit bucket part So the pipeline is completed now let's go back to our server as you can see uh, we have a report for new branch now let's open the report and uh, you can see the home screen the name has been changed from napsys to mvb rockets now yeah so this is the way you can execute a lighthouse from your bitbucket pipelines so now let's look into capturing lighthouse details for logged in users for example dashboard and everything so for that we'll be using puppeteer along with lighthouse so puppeteer is a tool that can be used to manipulate website for example for scrapping or automations right so we'll be using puppeteer to sign in and then we'll pass that browser context to lighthouse so that lighthouse will be able to get into the dashboard and further take the analysis okay so first let's check out the website which page i want to analyze okay so i want to analyze the profile page but if i open the profile page i am thrown away to the sign in all right so let's just sign in so i want to capture this page okay I want to capture this page. Now let's go back to our lighthouse. So uh, you might have noticed that we have some changes in our lighthouse RC dot JS file. Okay, so let's go through those changes one by one. So this to remain same. This is uh, to clean up the lighthouse runs like the previous details. This helpful is again uh, if you if you keep true then uh, a Chrome will uh, Chrome will open, okay, and you will be able to see the changes in real time. This is again the number of URLs. So this is Puppeter script. Uh, we'll be writing a script and putting it over here. All right, the name of the file in the same uh, directory and Puppeter launch options. If you remember, we had our uh, browser options previously inside collect settings but now we have to put those over here all right and remember all this four are very important along with this headless part okay and disable storage reset this is to let the browser know that we don't want to save the previous users details either we, we want to save it or we don't want to save it okay Single is our page single app page application which is false in our case. Then settings uh, everything else remains same. Uh, for the temporary purpose, we'll be uploading the report to public storage temporary public storage instead of our server. Okay. Now look, let's look at the Puppeter script and how we can create that. So Puppeter script will basically have a browser instance. Okay. A browser instance and a URL so what we'll be doing is we'll be creating a new page from the browser and going to the sign-in page which is uh, which we had earlier okay now let's see if the user is logged in or not already so for this what we'll be doing is let's uh, go to the profile page now we can safely assume that the sign out button will only appear if the user has been logged in otherwise there will be sign in button so let's take a look at our, our sign out button so we have a identifier that is sign out okay so let's try to get the instance of this button with the help of id which is sign out here okay now we will check if we were able to find that button or not 
If we were able to find that button, that means the user has already been logged in. If the button was not available, then the user has not been logged in and let's go ahead to log in the user for, uh, further. Okay, so let's sign out. Now, what we'll be doing is, now we are into this page already, that is sign in page, okay. Now wait for the selector. So this is our selector and we'll be will wait until this selector is available. So until the page loading has been done and this page uh, this selector has been appeared, we'll wait for it. Then we'll create the instance of that selector that is input in our case. So we'll get the email input, okay. And from that instance, we'll type my email ID to login, okay. Similarly let's get the id for password the id for password is password let's create the instance for that here then type the password okay now let's get the instance of our sign in button which is sign in in this case so let's get the button and then let's click it okay so sign in dot button will click it and after clicking it the page will navigate okay so in order for the navigation to complete we have to wait for the navigation to get over okay so now let's try to run it uh, i'll advise you to run it once in headful uh, way so that we can take a look that what is actually going on right now it is going to crash after two launches we'll see why Okay, let's run it again. So as you can see, the email was put, password was put, and now we are into the login page. Now Lighthouse will perform the analysis on the login page. I mean, on the profile page. So this is the second run. Did you observe that we just had two tabs? So after the run uh, two has been completed, this part, this uh, browser has been closed. So what the uh, browser uh, LSA doing is it is taking two tabs instead of three. So what we can do is to to overcome this, what we can do is we can just create empty new pages okay this is just a workaround let's run it and see if we have extra tabs or not So this is run 2 going on. So as you can see adding a extra tab as a workaround worked for us. Now let's try to open this report. So the lighthouse has done the analysis for the page I was logged into. Yeah. So this is how you basically do a login and then do the lighthouse analysis. Just remember uh, the script will change according to your website uh, login and uh, logout flow. Okay. 
now let's revert the lighthouse settings to be it headless because in the CI development we won't be having head full thing let's try to run it So yeah, uh, this thing has been completed. Now you can also add this to your bit bucket pipeline, a similar way we added earlier. There won't be any changes. You can also upload this report to your server. All right. Okay.